Hi, it's Mike here. Um, this video is going to be a short demo illustrating how I was able to create a an API management um, endpoint in Azure that will return some static data. So really a way of implementing a simple API without having to build a big complex backend behind the API proxy. So if we have a quick look um, in Azure, what I've decided to do is create a storage account and inside that I'm going to use the blob service and you can see here I've got a container called config and inside the um, inside the container so if we have a look I've just got um, storage explorer to make it simpler so here's my account here's my container and I've got a, um, a file here called my settings.json and we can just um, just download that file and um, we can we can see what's inside the um, storage account. So I just open that up. Bring that over the monitor here. So here you can see um, in the my settings.json file we've just got some really simple um, JSON text. And let's pretend that um, we're going to build an API that just returns some very simple config settings for use in an application. So these would be settings that aren't really going to change very often. We currently don't in our architecture have somewhere where these settings are stored. We just need to make them easily available to maybe something like a mobile app or a, a web app or to partners. So we've got that in uh, blob storage. So the next thing we can do um, from blob storage is we can generate um, we can generate a SAS token or a SAS key to be able to access the um, the container. So what I'm going to do here is using Storage Explorer, I'm going to get a shared access signature, and here you can see I can specify some options. You know, do I want to read, write, delete, etc. I can specify a duration. So in our case, here, it's probably worth having a really long duration. So I might choose like you know, f ten years or something like that. Um, I'll then create a key. And that key will give me um, the query string that I could use on a URL to access that um, file from storage. So what we need to do is just copy that and I'm going to just save that somewhere for later on. And um, we'll have a look at how we're going to use that in API management in a moment. So if you imagine that's my, that's my back end behind my API. So in this case I'm not going to build a big complex database and a load of custom code to access it. What I'm going to do is try and make um, API management access that file directly. So if we jump over into API management now, and here I've got um, I've got my API management instance, and you can see it's you know just all very vanilla typical setup. So inside the APIs, I've created one here called the Settings API. I'm just going to show you how that's configured. So in my settings API, in the settings section, I've basically given it a name. Um, and what I've done is for the back end URL that um, my API management proxy is going to sit in front of, I've specified the um, the blob account URL. So you can see here I've got my, my UNN test data dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. So that's the you know that's the URL for the um, the blob containers in um, in Azure. I'm going to use HTTPS as my scheme, and I'm going to give my um, my proxied API is going to have the suffix settings dash API. So if you're going to call it, it's going to look something like this. Now, next um, we're going to need to have some operations on our API. So what I what I did was I created an operation called my settings which is a get operation and um, what I'm basically going to do is using the URL rewrite um, template features of API management I'm going to create a nice friendly URL for the client to call and behind the scenes that's going to convert it so I end up actually having the URL with the um, with a full token in it and stuff to be able to access that storage um, that blob in, in storage so here I'm going to have um, the get operation with just get my settings and you can see here behind the scenes I've specified the name of the container inside the blob account I've specified the file name my settings.json 
and then I've got the query string which we copied before, which is all the all the information for the um, the SAS access to that. So at this point, that basically means I've now proxied that file almost as if it's a backend service, and now I can do everything else that I would normally do in in API management. So I can specify things like friendly name, documentation, responses. I can implement caching if I want to, and all that kind of thing. Um, all the security features become available to me, and once I've saved that, I can then go to the um, <clears throat> to the you know if I've published it and saved it, I can go to the um, the developer portal. So over here, you can see I've got my um, sorry, let's get rid of that. You can see I've got my um, API settings API um, operation here that we've just looked at you can see what the full URL for that would be so I've got my um, you know I said it was going to be settings API dash my settings and I get the usual friendly stuff like all the code samples and everything and what I can do is if I choose to try that out I can um, I'm just going to remove the trace header so now I can see what a, a request would look like again in the the whole you know the normal um, way for API management and I can send the request and really quickly you can see here I've got a response that's come back from um, Azure blob storage and it's just returned me the content of that file so here's my sentence if you think from a from a perspective of an application if I wanted to just have some really simple sentence held somewhere that was easily accessible it was secure but I didn't want to build a big complex back end to it. This is this is going to give me a really easy way to just um, have API management front end blobs that are held in Azure Blob Storage as, as an easy way of getting some, some relatively static data. So hopefully that shows you how easy that can be. Um, I would have the option of doing things, you know, like that was a what, 198 millisecond response, 56. It's pretty quick, but I've also got the option of caching some of that in... Um, in API management if I want to make it even quicker and I can do things like um, throttle it and all that kind of thing so really really easy way of getting a big amount of value out of this